Malaysia's four largest telecommunications firms are seeking a majority stake in government 5G agency Digital National, countering a proposal by the government to offer them a minority ownership, according to a letter sent to the Ministry of Finance. Reuters reported that the four dominant providers, Cellcom Axiata, Digital Communications, Maxis and U-Mobile, also want a review of the pricing model and network access plan offered by the agency, according to a May 9th letter Reuters had cited. Their objections to the government's proposal which offered up to 70% of the country's sole 5G network operator spread among a wider group of companies raises the risk of delays as the government aims to wrap up discussions on the stake sale by end June. According to the letter, the telcos said they would not be able to justify a passive minority investment in this venture without being able to exercise influence and control to safeguard its investment. Two people with direct knowledge of the letter confirmed its content to Reuters but declined to be identified. The companies and the MOF did not immediately reply to Reuters' request for comment and neither did DNB and the Ministry of Communications and Multimedia. The government in March offered all telcos in the country a combined equity stake of up to 70% in DNB after wireless carriers complained about its plan for a state-run network that will charge telcos for 5G access rather than allocating them spectrum. The May 9th letter made no mention of how the government's proposed stake of up to 70% was to be allocated, although one of the sources with direct knowledge of the matter said nine firms were invited to participate, leaving the four big players with only a combined minority stake. The firm said they were still willing to explore the government's proposal, but a stake of at least 51% would be the most viable to reach an agreement. Only two smaller operators, namely Telecom Malaysia and YTL Communications, have signed up for the plan. Also complicating Malaysia's 5G plans is an impasse between DNB and the four major players over pricing and transparency including a concern that a sole state-run network would result in a nationalised monopoly, according to reports. Aonco Malaysia said that prices of products sold at its outlets in Malaysia have increased between 3 and 5 percent, but the company has been able to delay the price hikes to enable consumers to adapt to the current inflation situation. Managing Director Shafi Samsudin said Aon is resisting a lot of pressure from suppliers to increase prices of products. He says that the company believes that it needs to constantly find ways to innovate and reduce its cost of goods sold and reduce its operating costs. Shafi said that Aon also applauded the government's initiatives to remove approved permit requirement to import foodstuffs into the country. He said the implementation will certainly help retailers provide better services to customers at a lower cost. On the increase in Malaysia's minimum monthly wage from 1,200 to 1,500 ringgit effective May 1st, Shafi said about 3,700 Aon employees, who account for approximately 40% of the company's workforce, had been given the salary increment since January 2022. He said the rise in Malaysia's minimum wage will have little impact on Aeon's operating costs. Afin Bank listed two threats, namely related to cost and talent, following the entrance of digital banks into the country recently, spurring competition in the banking sector. President and CEO Dato Wan Razli Abdullah explains that given the scarcity of talents, especially in the technology field, Afin is intent on tracing as many as it can get, train them and preserve them. He also notes that the bank has always been on a journey to accelerate its digitalization efforts, having the need to evolve to become more instant in its service and product delivery. He was talking to reporters at a press conference in conjunction with the official collaboration of Afin X My Theo. This partnership, the first of its kind between Afin and robo-advisory service provider GaxMD, would allow new and existing customers of Afin Advance to accumulate wealth by leveraging investment algorithms. Afin Advance is a segment which is specially created for the tech-savvy and the on-the-go professionals. According to Afin, My Theo's full automated portfolio maintenance capability which are critical to producing high, long-term investment performance, provide advantages such as low to zero entry and no hidden charges. One Nazli notes that Malaysia's mass affluent category is performing exceptionally well with an upward growth trend and that there is an increasing demand for more convenient avenues to invest. He says that the bank wants to evolve to be a competitive player in terms of the digital landscape and to challenge the digital banks and also the traditional banks with its its digital offerings.
Tomei Consolidated, which has recently expanded its retail stores into the East Coast, is now eyeing to launch a few more stores in underserved areas. Managing Director Dato Eng Yiping says Tomei, which has a total of 57 stores in Malaysia to date, will continue to focus on the good potential of the market. He says that the company opened a retail store in Langkawi in April and also in Maidin Tunjong in Kelantan. Eng says the plan is to open another two or three stores before the end of the year and that the average cost of one would be 5 million ringgit. Speaking to reporters after the company's AGM, Eng also confirmed that Tomei's precious metals arm, YXPM, is due to be listed on Bursa Malaysia by the end of June. He explains that the group has secured all the necessary approvals and is on track to launch the prospectus. Eng says the hope is that after the listing of YXPM, the manufacturing and distribution business will expand further. According to Eng, Tomei has seen a positive market sentiment with the influx of Indonesia and Singapore tourists in Malaysian shopping malls after the reopening of the country's borders. He adds that the Employees Provident Fund 10,000 ringgit special withdrawal scheme before the Hari Raya celebration had also helped to boost market spending. In relation to the effect on sales from the weakening of the Malaysian ringgit against the US dollar, he said it is mitigated by the slight weakening of the gold price. Commenting on the potential higher cost of procuring the precious metal, Ung said the cost will be passed on to the customers and that it works the other way as well if prices were to also come down. In terms of his forecast for gold and jewellery sales for the rest of the year, Ung says Tomei remains cautious with the ongoing war in Ukraine and the labour issues faced in Malaysia that indirectly impact its industry. Poultry player TPC Plus's external auditor, Crow Malaysia, has expressed an unmodified audit opinion with material uncertainty regarding its ability to continue as a going concern on the group's audited financial statements for FY21. In a boss filing, Crow Malaysia drew attention to the group's net loss of $28.5 million for FY21 and that its current liabilities exceeded its current assets by $29.06 million as at end December 2021. It said these conditions indicate the existence of a material uncertainty which may cast significant doubt about the group's ability to continue as a going concern. In a response, TPC Plus's management believes that with the existing credit facilities granted by the financial institutions, the recovery of egg selling prices as well as the subsidies of eggs to be received from the government, the group will be able to generate sufficient cash flows to meet its obligations and working capital needs for the next 12 months. TPC Plus shares close untraded today at 20 cents.